to all you Fire Alarm and Siren fans on YouTube. Uh, this is FS Thunderbolt Fan 1000 here again. Uh, this video is uh, made for a uh, Siren enthusiast up in Green Bay who just recently acquired uh, a R timer from West Shore Services. He's been having a little problems with uh, getting his AF timer, fi AR timer figured out. So I'm making a video in depth on how these work how to wire them, and maybe even put a little uh, remote control thing and what terminals do what. So, a little bit of an informational video. So, here we go. Let's dive right into it. Okay, both of these are Federal Signal Automatic Fire Siren and Air Aid Siren Timers. Model uh, AF2. This is the second generation. These, uh, ones are a little more rectangular much more compact than the first generation the first generation so the second generation has the buttons on the down here and the second well well first generation was that big rectangular one that was like sideways and the buttons were like there these ones have the buttons on the bottom so there's really no difference between these two timers this one is from august of 1981 this one is from uh, July of 17, no, not 1776, but, uh, 1976, so during the year of our country's bicentennial. Okay, so really no difference between these two timers, like I said. This one has the original two pilot lights and, uh, running cycle lights. This one is from my auto call panel, and this one was the one that came with because the original one died out. So, as the certain certain enthusiast said, he uh, is having trouble with his test button and his cancel button. So, another thing that comes in real handy when working with these is a multimeter that you can set to continuity test or ohm. Ohms, reading ohms. So, we'll go to this other timer because this one has a lot more wires in it due to it being on a uh, remote control. So, yeah, so I have my wires up there. Just got to make sure they're not touching each other because otherwise you have problems when I turn these on. So, timers are now on. So, when you do the test on these timers, you will not hear a relay engage inside there. None of these. You can hear the relays in this one. Alert. Cancel. None of the relays will engage because it's automatically just taking power and sending it directly to there. It's not using any relays to engage any of the cycle timers, which are those cams in there. So in order for the test button to work, you have to make a jumper between 1 and 2 for the test button to work. That's another one you have to do. In order for the cancel button to work, you have to, uh, well, and there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong with the cancel button. But you put a jumper. That one's screwed up because it's not screwed up. It's just because I have it on a relay. So if I grab my little remote here. One second. Let me just set you guys down there. Look at, you can study the jumper right there. So if I set off A. Oh, oh well, I kind of have to plug that in. Let me just plug her in here. If I plug in my relay. So that's for, I think, fire. One is attack, and this one's cancel, B's cancel. A was supposed to be fire, but. Wait, no, A is test. So, yeah, so that's basically how that works. So for these buttons, we're gonna quick turn her off here. So you need a jumper for sure at 1 and 2 on the AR and AF. You need a jumper on 1 and 2, and you need a jumper on 15 and 16. On the AR, you need to make a jumper between 9 and 3. I think on both of those, you have to do that. So on the AR, it's probably going to be, 
let's look at this on here. You're going to need a jumper between 8 and 2 because that's the common for the siren. Or you could just have it wired like me and just, well, I don't know on the AR, you probably won't need a jumper there. I think that's just an AF jumper only. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that one, but you can dive into that one later if it doesn't work still. Now all these buttons have a selective terminal that they go to. The common wire, which is the black wire, for both attack, fire, and alert, where on the AR, attack, and alert, is black. The black wire goes to terminal 7, which will be the same on the AR. 7 is your common. So you always want to make sure that all these wires are here for your buttons to work. Now a cancel is a funky one to deal with for your cancel button. That one really doesn't have a set designated terminal it goes to. It's up in these relays and it's hard to tell what's wrong with it if you're having problems with it. So that's pretty much it. Make sure you check your fuses and all that stuff. But yeah, make sure that all your wires are going to the right place. So for test, test goes to 1 and 3. But you need a jumper between 1 and 2 in the terminal block in there. Alert goes to 5 and 6. Well, no, 5 and 7. Attack is 4 and 7. And fire is 6 and 7. To hook up your power to it, power from your standard outlet is 110. That connects to terminals, what is it, 9 and 10 in the AF. Yeah, for 110 volts. For, on the AR, it is terminals 8 and 9 for 110 volts. Well, 120. On the AF, for 240, you hook it up to terminals 8 and 10. And then on the AR, it's going to be probably 7 and 9, if I had to guess. Yep, 7 and 9 for, two tw for 240 on the AR. So now that we're done with pretty much the wiring of it. Oh yeah, and then for on the AR, or on the AF, for your air raid, signals of attack and alert, that goes, one end of your wire goes to the terminal, 10. The other end comes from terminal 2. So that's important. You need so for your air aid signal power contact or power supply goes to terminals 2 and 10. And on the AR it goes from 1. Well, yeah, that's the way it works. On the AR, it's kind of hard to explain. So now we can dive into things. So this is your power transformer. The AFs and ARs run on 110 volts for the most part. There are components in there that can run off of pretty much any voltage, but there's components in there that are set to run on strictly 110 versus 240. So if you're running your AF timer, or AR timer, on 240 volts, you hook it up to terminals 8 and 10 because it's going to go through and send it to this transformer to step it down to 110. It's that way you do not fry your clock motor, which is an example of something that runs off of solely 110 volts. So that's the purpose of this. And a lot of these jumpers and stuff are necessary because if you have a Cyrotrol, one well, of those blue boxes, you're going to have a wiring harness if I can find it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it's a wiring harness with a lot of wires in it that connect to the different spots in the Cyrotrol that activate the AF or AR timer. So that's why a lot of these jumpers are necessary, but if you have it hooked up to a Cyrotrol, the jumpers are not necessary. 
necessarily. Okay, so now there are two types of AF and AR timers, other than the series they are like series one and series two, but there are two different types. So these are the standard AF timers, these two. Both of them have the three minute wheels, three minute uh, cam cycles. So what that means is if I were to press alert, the, this timer is going to cycle for three minutes. So you'll have a three minute alert cycle. Federal Signal also had a timer called the AR5. The AR5 had wheels that were slightly larger in diameter that allowed for a five minute cycle timing. I've never seen one of these in my life. I'm sure they're out there somewhere, but that's the case. There was an AR5 that allowed for a longer time period. Well, that allowed for a longer cycle time. So now these wheels are, each of these wheels have a different purpose. So the first wheel is the cycle timer. So after three, this, this wheel here will go for three minutes. And after, th well, slightly longer than three minutes. So when this wheel goes, this cam is what's sending power to this motor. I don't know what you mean by what happened, NGMA2, but now I'm just kind of dipping, dipping into the other things. Why is it doing that? Yeah, I'm responding to live comments right now. Uh, it's doing this because I'm just moving it by hand, which you can. But, uh, so yeah, when it's in, the cams are in this crevice, the timer is not sending power. Well, when the cams are in the crevice, that means that power is going to the siren. When the cams are at the top, the siren is off. When the cams are down, the siren's on. So this one's a cycle timer, so that controls this this thing to rotate for three minutes, and then once it gets back to the top, well, once it drops down, it's done, so it won't be on anymore. Like the cycle is over. That's why it's that thing is that uh, clip is on that. Much we call it that pole. Okay, now this one's the alert cycle timer so that kind of causes it to run for a solid three minutes and then it reaches the peak and then it cuts off right there and that's at the same point where that cycle timer cut this the cycle timer cuts off power to the whole AF timer this one is the attack timer that one's straightforward four seconds on well yeah four seconds on eight to six seconds off depends on what it is, it varied throughout the years. And this is the fire timer. Usually no two fire signal cam wheels are the same. So that's an example of two different ones. It all depends on what you ordered it in. And the AF timer wasn't used just solely on 1003s. It was used on STH-10s with coding mechanisms, Model 5s with coding mechanisms. So that's why I'd be like, oh, what? like high-low would sound weird with that. It's like, well, it wasn't solely used on 1003s. It could be used on anything with a coding device. So that's why it's like that. Um, yeah, your ice cube relays control the whole show in there. It's pretty much that. Yeah, I have much too more to say about these. These timers are pretty much straightforward. If everyone needs me to make an in-depth video on how to hook up a RC relay to these things, I'll show you. It's not really that hard. But, here, i got to quick read the comments. Can I see them? Yeah. When I press alert or attack button once, it will not work. I need to hold it. Is that normal? No, why is it doing that? I got my AR timer conditioned for $100. Is that normal? Yeah, these AR timers, $100 is a pretty much normal price range. For this one, when I got it back when I first started, the AF timers are usually a little more pricey. I paid $145 for this one. This one I just got, this one was $125. The person was selling both AR and AF timers. I wanted an AR timer. I was just all like, because I thought the AF timers were the same, were going to be more 
But he said, oh, nope, they're the same price. It's like, well, why would I be stupid and buy an AR timer when I can get an AF for the same price when these ones are a little more hard to come by? Uh, why your thing isn't working normally? It would really help if you would put voice in your videos. That way you can explain what you're seeing and stuff. And understand that your mic is broken Engamate, but uh, really help if you could talk in your videos like I do because then you can explain to others what's seeing and what's going wrong versus having a really long comment battle. Well, not really battle, but trying to explain to people over comments. But yeah, that's the most common problems is not having 1 and 2 jumpered and not having 15, 16 jumpered. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty long video. Thanks for watching. Eventually I'll make a video on my uh, RC3 because that thing's pretty fun. Maybe not today, but we'll see. 1003 is going back together today, so i got to go get hardware after this. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, have a good day.